everybody and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork and with me I have Norman Sanso. Hi, the mateys. How you be doing? No, please. No, stop. Stop that. No, no, no. no. If you're going to be like that, this is going to be a very long episode. And also we have the awesome, the great, the fantastic Silver Quill. Arn, I'd be talking over I please, me heart and despair. God yes. damn it. Oh my god, okay, I give up. Two out of three. Okay, we're doing this episode in pirate accents, but I won't because I suck at doing accents. I do! Don't giggle! Parley! Parley! Uh, parley! That's the only I, I can remember. <laughs> you can't be worse than Orlando Bloom. <laughs> oh, no, believe me, Orlando Bloom is kind of like average compared to how bad I can do a pirate accent. At least he has like a bit of comedy going on for him. <laughs> yes, a bust! <laughs> Nobody says that. Of course, nobody does. Whenever he says that in the sh- in the movie, they laugh at him. <laughs> so pirates, eh? Oh uh, yeah. So yeah, because hey, we have to talk what we're reviewing today. Oh my gosh. Uh, we are we are reviewing the pirate arc, the Salty Simmer uh, comic arc for the MLPFIM regular series produced by ADW. That's issues thirteen and fourteen. Of the main series, uh, starring, of course, the main six in a pirate story. Um, I really am not sure how to tackle this one because that is basically a spoilers from the get go. I think we can, like, give the basic storyline and just then continue on, on the rest of the review just by telling what's going on. Yeah, I mean, we'll, if we're gonna hit spoilers, we just say spoilers. If you haven't yeah. read the comic, go read it now. Yeah, if you're gonna, if you want to read the comic or read it, it's uh, it's a good one. But I think you know what? Before we start going on this one, we should give our opinions. Let's I... give our opinions. It's been a long time since I made a review. Does it? Is it noticeable? Aye, <laughs> it'd be noticeable, my meat. Mm. Oh god. Yeah. All right. So, like always, I'm gonna leave my opinion for last. Um. So let's go in alphabetical order. Uh, let's go with Norman first. Well. I was shocked that it was going to be pirates. <laughs> who who would have thought that, right? We we never see the sea. We never know them to be at a beach or anything like that. So yeah, pirates they exist. And what about you, Silver? What did you think of this uh, comic arc? Well, I enjoyed it overall. I mean, it's fun, it's lighthearted, and I think everybody wanted to see these ponies on a pirate uh, quest sooner or later, or at least have to deal with pirates. It's a, it's a high fantasy world. Of course, there's got to be pirates somewhere. I am kind of surprised that all the pirates are ponies because <laughs> they just don't strike me as the type. <laughs> you throw in some griffins, you throw in some minotaurs. Uh, you know, when you're a patchwork of parts in nature, you're b- bound to have personality issues. <laughs> true, true. So you're basically saying that the minorities in Equestria have are misrepresent, not, not represented <laughs> enough in the pirate society. That's right. I demand equal outlawness for all. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's also the ending, which I, I want to talk more about that when we get to it, but I was like, uh, it's only a two-part comic, there's not a lot of time, but at, the, but at the same point, you're asking me to really be invested in this, and I'm like, I just met these folks. I will bring up the I will bring up the ending, Um in that, yeah, the ending is problematic, but I kind of like the ending from a you know movie fan point of view. Uh, but yeah, I will agree with you that it is difficult to feel anything about the ending when you basically have little to no connection with the characters involved. It's a cantaloupe like, so, waiting all over again. It's a cantaloupe. Yeah, it is. So like, oh god, pirate plot hole and and his uh, waifu horse. <laughs> Oh, spoilers. What? We didn't say if it's a horse or whatever. <laughs> I really did like this uh, this comic. It does have big problems in it. Mm-hmm. Like, big, massive, staring in your face uh, problems. But I am totally willing to, le- to let them go away because it's a pirate comic. And... Pirates and cowboys are the two things that carried from my child, like the my, the most basic things that carried from my childhood and followed me into adulthood, and I still love them, and I still am a fan of of them. And 
whenever there is a good pirate movie out there or good comic pi- pirate comic out there like this one, I enjoy it. And whenever there is a bad pirate movie out there, go through Rhode Island. <laughs> I really, it really makes me cry tears because oh, they can they they can get them so wrong. True, true. Now all so we need are ninjas. Yeah. Oh God, don't put pirate ninja cowboys. And then James died. And probably aliens. No, we tried that with cowboys already, and it didn't really take. It didn't work at all. <laughs> no comment. Oh, oh my God, James Bond and Indiana Jones joined together to realize what, to discover what James Bond has. Why James Bond has a pit boy on his wrist? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> that movie sucks. Anyway, uh, but yeah, I did love the comic, although I am more than willing to admit that it does have problems. And in order to speak about the things that, that work and don't work, I think we have now to go um, hip deep into spoilers. Yep, yep. So now for real these people, if you don't want to read, if you don't want to get spoilers or anything, just stop listening. Stop listening to us. Um, mm-hmm. Go read the comic. It's there. It's on Comixology. It's super cheap. I mean, come on. You can spare the four bucks that it costs to download the comic. I think it's even cheaper now. Really? Yeah, because at a certain time, some of the comics, they get discounted just because they're old. And wow, I didn't know that. You know, it did surprise me. Uh, I went yesterday to a comic book shop and I wanted to like get some Guardians of the Galaxy comics. Mm-hmm. I realized that the normal... <clears throat> The, the the normal issues they are like two euros each. That's super cheap. Last time I was buying comics it was like five euros for an for an issue. Did they drop price or something? I have no idea. Uh, because it's publication and how old the book is, depending on how good the sales is. Like Guardians, their sale for it is pretty well. How do I put this? The story in the comic book verse, not good, not good. Well, it's not that I was uh, I wasn't gonna. I was just making a comparison. I don't want to talk about Guardians because this is not, that's not the subject of the review, even though they can be also considered pirates, right? I am Groot. And I've seen it three times and walked it each time, so there you go. It's okay, dude. I have seen it two, uh, I have seen it twice. I just, it's so good. It's such a good movie. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, the Salty Seamer arc. So, um, it's funny. We start we, with the comic, we start right away and it reminds us that, oh, right. This is the first comic where Princess Twilight makes an appearance. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That is true. I forgot to mention about that one, too. Yeah. Yes, indeed. It's and like, ooh, bam! The backlash. <laughs> oh, my gosh, mm. yeah. Like, if you go check the comments on uh, whenever they, they talk about the comic, oh, why did they have to put Princess Twilight in there? Now this comic sucks. I'm not going to support the official release anymore. I'm like, oh, really? Uh, yeah, I mean, really, you know... Give it a break, please. It got so bad that Andy Price had to make a uh, a journal on his DeviantArt account just trying to address and say to people, look, we planned this, it's happening, it's staying. It's not going away just because you pout. You know, funny (laughs) enough, uh, Andy Price didn't work on this. Yeah. He didn't, but he coordinates all this stuff. Hmm. Uh, Yeah, he didn't, but he's involved in the comics as much as the next man. But yeah, basically the fans got so uppity they had to do damage control, which was, this was this was right after Magical Mystery Cure, so everyone emotions were running pretty high yeah. in the fandom. Yeah. yeah. Then again, I've I've never known emotions to run low in a fandom. Oh, yeah. Not true. <laughs> but it's, it's not the moment. Of, not right? the moment of break. Not a break. Yeah. It's all high emotions with these people. Yeah, they couldn't like <laughs> leave it be, let it go, something like that. No, don't. What? Don't let it go. <laughs> I didn't uh, try anything uh, about that one. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, it did happen after Magical Mystery Cure, but after <laughs> Magical Mystery Cure, we had like the Big Macintosh comic arc, mm-hmm. the Nightmare Rarity comic arc, uh, the Cadence and Shannon Armor arc, which was basically the last time we saw normal Unicorn Twilight in the comics. Before oh, yeah. uh, they brought back, they, they brought in Princess Twilight. Um, we also had the Twilight Micro. We had all the other micros. But hell, for what I know, all the micros feature Unicorn Twilight, and they didn't bring Alicorn Twilight up until the Friends Forever series. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's it's just like you said, Silver. Andy Price was saying, "This is a staying. This is happening. There is no way for you to stop it. It doesn't matter how much you complain." 
Yep, it's Hasbro's IP, and Hasbro wants it to happen that way. So yeah, yeah. I mean, don't complain. Well, how do I put this? Don't bite the hand that feeds you. Imagine if, for example, you have a red and black alicorn OC. Oh God, yeah. And oh. somebody comes and makes it green. I'm pretty sure you will be angry as well. Oh, true that, true that. I mean, the color scheme that we pick is for a reason. And I think we're way going off topic right now. We are, we are. But it's... I'm sorry. Ah, it's cool, it's fun. Fun. Suffice to say, there was drama. Oh, there yeah. There was drama. Just, just from the first panel on, you already have people complaining. I don't ah. say first panel, I say cover. No, it is... No, actually, in the pa- in the cover, you cannot see Twilight's wings. Oh. Okay, my bad. Yes, first yeah, panel then. On, on the covers, actually, she is still a unicorn. Which, well, depends on which cover you're looking at. Mm, mm, uh, mm, mm. There's artwork by Sarah Richard where it's very clearly Unicorn Twilight, but there's also some artwork by Brenda Hickey where Twilight and company are all tied up while Dash is in a duel, so you can't see if she has wings or not. You know what? That is the other issue that I was going to bring up. The the other problem with the comic is that um, for the first 20 pages or so, it feels like uh, they added Twilight's wings as an afterthought. Mm-hmm. Because at times it does feel like, you know, they, ha- they have been tucked in. So, James, what, what's the story about this one? Like, we've touched upon it, but what's the real story for this? Well, the real story is that the main six decide to spend a day at the beach, and when Father Shai is trying to release one of her fish friends in the ocean, uh, a, a, a giant pirate ship arrives at uh, at, so, at Sor, and uh, uh, there goes a pony fight uh, Jack Sparrow, yep. also known as Hoofbeard, uh, who's looking for a crew of ponies, to go find the map of the Wandering X, so he can find his jewel that is only indicated by that uh, weird map. So Fluttershy, uh, having lost her fishy friend, is the one that moves the rest of the main six. Fluttershy, out of all ponies, <laughs> moves the rest of the main, she- main six to join the, the crew, yep. and so they get in the ship along with Hoofbeard. What follows is... A swashbuckling adventure full of excitement, giant enemy crabs, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rarity with her frilly hats, mm-hmm. Applejack with her serum of truth, and probably some of the best Fluttershy expressions I have seen in a while. <laughs> yep, yep. It's technically a Fluttershy kind of comic where she drives the plot until a certain point, the beginning and the end, but in the middle it's just like, hey... Pirate Dash, she's real, yo. (laughs) Pirate Dash is canon. (laughs) Yeah, and like any of the previous comics, the callback or the pop culture reference are high, are really high. It's a fun pirate adventure. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I I must say, Pirate Dash drove the crew just as much as Fluttershy, I think. She's all on board for being a pirate. Uh, and, someone, and I'm sure someone will say, Oh, they never established in the show that she wants to be a pirate. Oh, no, she never She never did. But she wants... She likes adventure, so it's not out of character yeah. in my eyes. Who, Fluttershy? No, I no, Dash. Dash. Oh, yeah, that's true, that's true. Her love of adventure just overrides anything, and the, the fact that she's, fa- she's pretty much fangirling <laughs> for the first half of the story... Oh, especially God, when yes, she, finds, she is. Especially when she finds out that it's Hoofbeard she's uh, managed to find. Yep, yep. I don't know, this comic is just awesome. Uh, there's so much things that we can touch upon, like... Uh, it's all over the place. Well, let's, 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 let's continue in order, like, yeah, right, right, right after... Um, well, you know, that is the basic story. Now we should talk about the things that work and the things that don't work. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In my own opinion. All right. We can start with the name of the ship, because I think it should be changed. Oh, Rather than the salty sea mare, uh, it should be changed to the van with free candy. <laughs> oh, you're killing Ooh. me. Easy there. Don't you, don't choke on air. Don't die. Uh, don't die, Norman. Uh, don't no. die. We, uh, you got this pirate ship that nearly crushes Fluttershy uh, on the beach. And the van says, hey, I'm looking for crew. And they're like, we'll be your crew. What's your name? <laughs> like, Rainbow. 
Stranger Danger. <laughs> well, her middle name is Danger. Well, she, apparently, Do you... because she hops on board right away, flutters her on board to hunt down the fish, and everyone else is going along because they either, well, Pinky wants to because she's Pinky, Rarity wants to because she's a... Enchanted by his mizzen mask, if you take my meaning, when quick nudge nudge. <laughs> uh, and Applejack and Twilight are trying to be the responsible ones. Yeah, but uh, still, Twilight is like, ooh, finding a wandering, a wandering uh, plan. Now, that's something that I will totally want to do. Actually, the only one that is kind of like disgruntled about this, being the grown up of the team, is Applejack. You no, know, I, I just like how the captain <laughs> pulled uh, Twilight in. Like, yeah, if you, I need to find them. Best navigator around there. I mean, the best. Not like you. You're, you're terrible. I mean, the best. And like, Fatasha, just, what? You want the best? I am the best. And she just swaps ships. <laughs> you mean Twilight? Yeah. Yeah, you yes. said Fatasha. Oh, really? I'm sorry. I derp. And Spike's on board to be the parrot. The parrot, yeah. Which, again, <laughs> great use of Spike, guys. Well, I don't know, Spike. <laughs> You are learning from the people who write the show. That's a, that's 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 not a good thing. You need to do something uh, better with Spike. God he'll damn have it. his moment. He'll have his moment in the comic. It is true that yeah, later on in the comic, yeah. But Jesus, uh, that's know, the one thing. Go ahead, go ahead. There is one panel where he's going sigh, Spike oh. one cracker, but in a little thought bubble over his head, he is just squeeing. <laughs> so. At least he's not unhappy to be on board. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I mean, the first um, part during the comic is really awesome. I view it in comicsology with the dynamic viewer. And when the ship set sail, I thought that was the end because it was a perfect moment to end it there and continue on the second book. But no, it, it will carry on. I would like to talk about Fluttershy because that one, that's probably the most hit or miss for me. Mm-hmm. You've got Fluttershy. She's devoted her life to caring for animals and returning them to their homes. And while I, I'm totally on board with her having issues with letting go mm-hmm. and just being worried about releasing a little fish into the big white ocean, the moment where she gets on board, goes out and abducts him from his home for her own gratification, I like, ooh. Hey, this isn't creepy much. <laughs> I guess that the whole thing with Fluttershy and the fish, it's kind of like, you know, uh, it, it does pay off at the end. Mm-hmm, when mm-hmm. when you do realize that sometimes you cannot let go of some people and that you have to be able to learn how to move away from them and just letting them be what they are uh, and letting them grow. That's... I guess that's more like a message to the grown-ups than a message to children. In that sometimes you have you have to let other people just go away to be themselves and to have their own lives, instead of like you know, be all over them all the time and not letting them room to breathe. Mm. And putting football helmets on their heads. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, exactly. But besides that, I mean, that's one lesson that we will learn at the end. But let's move on with how this crazy pirate guy is telling the crew to go to this one um, port just to find his map back. And that scene was the best scene I've ever seen in Pony Comic. Are you talking about the the cantina scene? Yes. (laughs) You can see the One Piece pony showing up? Yes! And also the dancing Judy Mark Crusaders. Also uh, dancing in the style of One Piece. Really awesome. You got Big Mac and Gray Smith, and they thought about it. It's like, you know what? We've seen in many episodes the exact same ponies in Ponyville are in Dodge Junction, but they've got funny hats. <laughs> so why not some turnabout? Yeah. They Probably also have not. different. They also have different cutie marks and scars on their faces. Uh huh. I didn't notice the cutie marks. Yeah, I, th- I think that Big Macintosh has like a watermelon instead of an apple. Oh really? You know. I don't check. I think I don't remember pro- correctly, but he also doesn't have the the the, um, the color Yuck. that he usually carries. Oh, mm-hmm. He's got a scarf. I will say for a minute there. There's a panel where Pinky is salivating over seeing pineapple pies. Yeah, yeah. 
the way she's positioned, it looks like one oh, no. saliva is Big Mac's cutie mark, and it looks like she's tasting something other than the pies, if you know what I mean. I know, oh, God, I really? <laughs> I just ruined this comic for you. <laughs> you might am, as well have. <laughs> I am Silver Quill, wrecker of your stuff. Oh, no. Yes, like... Here's here's what happened. I, I do my best to stay away from the gutter, and then somebody throws me in right there. And I, Aha, head first into the gutter. I'm like, God damn it. And Jinx, it's usually my fault and my doing, but not this time, man. <laughs> it's just, you know what? It's funny because a couple of panels later, Pinkie Pie is all like, hee hee, take our booties to the booty. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh... And ah, uh, that's the, that's, uh, but that's that's more more or less about the part. Like this review is all over the place. I just realized. But anyway, we're gonna just keep going through it. Um, yeah. m- to bring back the issue that I had with they were not making very good use of the whole princess thing. Mm-hmm. As soon as Dash starts like uh, a sword fighting with every other pony in the cantina and all that, and she goes Link from the Legend of Zelda is like, well, excuse me, princess. <laughs> And that's when they bring it up. Yep, yep. And that was cool, but at the same time, it made me realize, oh, wow. So Twilight is pulling a Bill Pullman in, in Independence Day on this one. <laughs> She's basically risking her life <laughs> and going into a very dangerous situation when you think about it. Yeah. While she's also a ruler of the land. Like, if it wasn't because she can throw magic spells and zap all the other uh, pirates in their bats... Uh, she'd uh, she'd been kidnapped. Yeah, technically for this one, she's no ruler of any, anything yet. Probably the ruler yeah. of her library, but that's about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, technically the princes of uh, of uh, the United Kingdom, they are not ruler of anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't have that big of a charge, but if something happens to them, that is a big deal. Mm-hmm. So contradictory. Hmm. Yeah. They don't rule. They don't rule anything. But if anything happens to them, we're all doomed. How does <laughs> yeah. that work? Technically, because, well, Princess Twilight saves our butts all the time. And have you seen Celestia lift a hoof to do anything else? Not lately, but yeah. that's a that's a great for another day. <laughs> Indeed. I will say that... I've seen the flashback, but... <laughs> while, while, while Twilight putting herself in this danger is not so great, I will say that the scene where she gets the entire pirates onto her side, with a little bit of uh, muscle flexing, <laughs> metaphorically speaking... That was actually impressed me more than anything she did during season four as a princess. <laughs> true, she, true. She makes them an offer, has to use a little force to make them realize that this offer is better than what you're planning. <laughs> but she's fully planning to honor her bond, and she gets both uh, extra help and information on their mystery captain. Mm-hmm. So more of that, please. More of that in Princess Twilight is something to celebrate. I mm-hmm. I enjoy seeing her in a leadership role more than I do being told she's got a really great title. Well, at least the comic's doing something right. The comic is doing a lot of things right. Is that um, we are focusing more on the problems that the comic has more than on the things that it's doing right. The comic is awesome. Like the story is pretty solid for what it is, and for being a two-issue comic, it was pretty good. And the yeah. art here is pretty awesome. Like. Uh, I don't. I want to keep for what I like and dislike later on, but I am enjoying this. I think it's uh, Brendan Hickey doing the artwork for this. I yep, that'd be true. Yes, <clears throat> my favorite writing, my favorite combo team is still uh, Cook and Price. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> pardon me, Heather uh, Neufer and Brenda Hickey did a really great job with the artwork and expressions and the story. I mean, it's fun. It's lighthearted, and it's asking you say they're on a pirate adventure. Just have fun with it. True, 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 true. Now, I'm me, so of course I've always got to say, well, there's, this <laughs> could have been done better. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't but mean it's bad. It is it is, it is you. It's basically anyone who is uh, more than willing to like read this with a bit of a critical eye and saying, okay, this makes sense. This doesn't make a lot of sense. This is, this is good. This is bad. Etc. Etc. I was going to bring up the one combo that I also like compared to Kate, uh, Katie Cook and Andy Price. Yes, let me look for it. They are the guys who did the micro, the the Friends Forever of Twilight Sparkle and Shining Armor. Let me get the name. Uh-huh. It's uh, Rob Anderson and Amy Meverson. 
Yes. Mm-hmm. They are really good. And also the uh, uh, Jeremy Whiteley and Tony Flix, especially Tony Flix, he is the guy who draw, uh, who did the artwork for the QD Crusaders and Discord, Friends Forever, and the Flutter Science Sekora Friends Forever comic. Oh, don't forget that he also did the first Rainbow Dash Micro. Yes, well, yes, I don't forget that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we, I think we've already established that was a universal meh. Art-wise, not so much. Story-wise, yeah, it was a very meh comic. Mm. But I think um, Tony Fleet has improved a lot since that. Art-wise, yeah, he has. Mm-hmm. He has, he has. But anyway, we are going, we are going off topic in here. Is that I'm trying to figure out why we are going so off topic with this story, and is that when it comes down to it, it's not a very complicated story. Mm-hmm. It's pretty straightforward. True, true. Oh, yeah. There's not That's... a lot of duplicity or uh, plot twists. Yeah, like, the only real plot twist, and this is the one that I want to talk about, is that the all the, the so-mentioned jewel, the so-mentioned uh, treasure that Hoofbeer is looking for, the the, one, the wandering X that he's always trying to put his, his hoofs on, is none other than a sea pony. Yeah, it's a sea pony, it's a mermaid. It's a mermaid, or whatever you call it. It's like, uh, it is... Not a jewel, not a physical treasure, but a real pony. So, because he's in love with her, and he doesn't want to l- let her go. <laughs> and that's why he had a Spike sending all those letters all the time. It was a way for him to keep in contact with her. Yeah, and yeah. that's why the Wandering X kept moving, because it was she was moving with the rest of her uh, of her family. In a weird way, it's not even a plot twist, as uh, when Applejack was trying to ply him with that <laughs> truth serum, he says... They be love letters, of course. Yeah, yeah. What are those letters? Well, they are love letters. We forgot to mention this early on, that Applejack's basically making hard pineapple cider. (laughs) Yep, which is so strong, it's a truth serum. (laughs) Yep, and also Fluttershy goes hick at one of the scenes, so yeah. (laughs) That is the one thing that I wanted to specifically, specifically talk about compared to one movie. It's about a reporter and her husband, and they are looking for a, a jewel, apparently, something that uh, that is supposed to bring peace to a Middle Eastern country that never gets mentioned because, you know, we don't we want to be politically correct. But as the movie moves forward, they realize that the jewel is not a real physical jewel or a treasure, but a spiritual leader. Oh my! That they call the jewel. It's an it's a person. So I found it really fun that. I was like, oh, wow, I can actually draw a, refer- uh, a parallel with one of my childhood movies in the MLP comics. That's cool. I wonder if they actually did that intentionally. And I want to ask uh, the writer of this arc if he was inspired by that movie in particular. I mean, he called her Jewel. Her name is Jewel. Mm-hmm. The name of the movie is Jewel of the Nile. Are you... I'm pretty sure it's a direct reference. I mean, come Probably, on. probably. And, well... If we get him on, we'll interview him. I'm afraid it went over my head. I, I haven't seen Jewel in the Nile. Same here. If you watch it, you're going to have a very strong um, Uncharted uh, uh, Drake's Fortune uh, vibe to it. Okay. There is one scene that is literally like in the game Uncharted. And this movie is from 1985, the, day that, the, the year that I was born. So it's, I'm pretty sure it's a direct inspiration to it. So, moving on, giant enemy crabs. <laughs> yes, the, oh. rar- the rarity memes are in full force on this one. <laughs> by the way, this was before this comic, so um, influenced by the fandom, probably, maybe. The giant rarity enemy crabs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, probably, no, who knows. In the comic, rarity doesn't really fight the crab, but distracts it while Rainbow search for the map. And yeah, it is a fun scene. Everyone's having, well, not really everyone, but just Pinky. She summons her crabs and, well, big giant crab. Oh yeah, that sounds so bad, Norman. I don't know, it's... it's Pinkie Pie they're... summons her crabs. <laughs> oh god, you! <laughs> what? They have a cream for that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. Oh my gosh. What is uh, wrong with us, guys? What is uh, wrong with us today? nothing wrong with us. We are... We are taking this to its natural, silly conclusion. It's been a month. It's been a month. But anywho... Without reviewing, by the way, we have to specify. Yeah. Our derpiness is all over the place. That's why we're not reviewing this right. 
Oh, we're reviewing it, right? Come on, you got to have a sense of fun about these things. Yo so summon ye crabs <laughs> and have some shampoo on hand. Oh, God. I so, guess, you know what? Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, uh, I figured it out. I know why this review is all over the place now. Why? Yes, I got it. I got it. I cracked <laughs> the the secret behind the derpiness of this review. <clears throat> and it is? Okay. It's very similar to what happens in the comic. Now, you see, the comic doesn't have um, a very good sense of rhythm mm-hmm. in that it will go fast and furious and like, uh, oh, action scene, action scene, then we have a dialogue scene, then we have dialogue scene, then we're trying to convince Dash to betray the uh, betray the captain, but then she doesn't, but then she does, but then we just to go to throw him into the brig and then... Uh, we're gonna have a fight in the in the in the, in the ship itself, and <laughs> it, it's like it doesn't have established rhythm. Yep, yep. It's t- something similar similar to what's happening here. However, because it's so much fun, it's filled with so much uh, with so many cool uh, setups, so much creativity, and it does a very good use of the characters and their traits and their personalities. It really doesn't matter. Oh, true, true. That it has that uneven pace, that it has that uneven rhythm. And to be perfectly honest, that it has that justifiable and make sense, but completely out of nowhere ending. Mm. Uh, that it basically, it gives the conclusion of the comic in two and a half pages. Um, when usually the conclusion to a comic, especially a two-parter, it shouldn't take, uh, it shouldn't take le- less than three pages, at mm-hmm, least. Mm-hmm. But no, this one is like, kind of like ends and you're like, whoa. What did just happen? <laughs> so true, so true. So yeah, I mean, it is, it is the the comic has issues, but it has so much creativity in it that at least for me, it's it, it's completely excusable. It's a fun ride. True. I mean, just looking at it, like looking at how the art is done, it's forgivable in the sense where stories are all over the place, action scene, talking scene, action scene again. It's fun. I I can't see anything else. Well, after Captain Jack Sparrow got thrown into the slammer, what else, guys? Well, like I say, the introduction of Jewel and the Mermares and the rather speed resolution, it's so hard when you just say, oh, these characters are in love. Okay, I'll accept that as a fact, but I'm not really rooting for them because of it. Mm -hmm. And this this is funny because the comics have dealt with love more than the show. Three times by my count. Keith's yeah. Shining Armor, how they first fell in love. <laughs> Basically, I still got a laugh that looks like Cadence is zapping Shining Armor with her love spell. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, you. I, I kid. He, he, he sees her, he's in love. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Hoof Beard and Jewel, they were in love before this story started. All we right. don't get to see anything. Mm-hmm. And, and then looking a little further ahead to Reflections. Oh, that, that was one. As much as there's a lot to talk about in the execution, that one was probably the one that did the best job of letting us see a relationship develop. Yep, yep. Yes. They have four issues to work with, so they have a lot of... Yeah, that's the theme, but I know exactly where Silver is coming. You're basically saying that they sacrifice building up this romance between these two characters to give us a cool twist. Yes, and because it's only two two issues, you really don't have time to find out how they even met. <laughs> true, true. Yeah. Like, I, I, I really like the twist, but I completely agree with you. You can actually, you actually have a better build-up in relationship between Fluttershy and her fish <laughs> than between Hoofbeer and her murmur. And the fish doesn't even talk. And the fish doesn't even talk, yeah, but yet he's more likable than the murmur, just for the fact that, hey, it's a fish, he doesn't know any better, he might want to get back to his family... Who knows? Maybe he has children. Oh my God! Somebody, please release that fish. Get it out of the coconut, Fluttershy. What is wrong with you? Unhoof that fish. Uh, maybe. So we can call Finn. Oh God. No, but, uh, but fish day uh, afternoon. Oh God. So after the resolution, um, Twilight casts a spell on Hoofbeer, giving him gills so that he can be with his fish friends. Basically they... turning him into Kevin Costner in Waterworld. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, funny enough, I went to the Universal Studio and watched the Waterworld team uh, uh, show 
over there. It's a much better show than the movie, really. Hey, you don't need to low. That's not a word. Bar right there, man. Nope, nope. It's true. It's much more entertaining. <laughs> I know, I know, but the movie, <laughs> talking about pirates and all that, the movie has, we could be talking about Water War, let's not do that. And then there's the Mental Hawk. The what? Uh, let's see, it's the Mental Hawk, which uh, I'm sure there's an inappropriate Steve Irwin joke I could make here, but I won't. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. But Oh, my God, no, please, Silver, don't go there. <laughs> no, oh, That's Silver. inappropriate. But uh, <laughs> the... Um, the thing is that this comic is kind of assuming you've read Under the Sparkling Sea. Oh, really? Which I have. Which I have. Uh, really great artwork, really... Well, it's a book aimed at little kids, so there's not much story to it. Mm -hmm. But um, that's where they introduced this thing, a mantle hawk. It's a cross between a manta ray and a hawk. Okay. And just, I always wondered about this. Like, why are you inventing these things when there's ample sea life? Sailors had little to do... Back in the day, so all they did was imagine things that could kill them. <laughs> oh, that's so good. You, you've got ample mythical creatures to pull from, so why? You, why you, Mantle Hawk? You know, Silver. This is this is this reminds me of the first Avatar, where Aang and his friends are guessing what kind of bear does the Earth, Earth King has. Like, is it a bear hog, bear something like that? And when they just say it's bare, like, eh, that's boring. Why didn't I remember this? I am looking at the comic right now, and I am like, that is the first time that I see this thing. <laughs> really? No. I didn't I didn't remember the Amanda Hawk at all. How could I forget this? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay, on one yeah. Page. It does. It does appear on one page. God damn it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there is another. Why could <clears throat> they, they? They should have used this more often. Yeah, and well, with that, the crew goes home, and Captain Hoofbeard and Jewel have a happy ending. And let's not forget that Fluttershy finally releases the oh, fish yeah, in the true, ocean. True, true, true. Yeah. true, true. Uh, come on, come on. It's like that is the most, the most important storyline of the entire comic. <laughs> really, no. The driving force. Yeah, I thought it was uh, just Rainbow Dash being awesome. <laughs> I can, I can tell you is that I did care about the fish more than I care about the orca in Free Willy. <laughs> Just crush the kid. <laughs> Take him down. <laughs> uh, but still, yeah. but still. Yeah, okay, but yeah, overall, I still really like this. Um, it is a swashbuckling uh, adventure with very low stakes. <laughs> mm-hmm. If you want to have something that is mindless, fun, and character-driven uh, to read through very quickly, because you're going to read through this in a breeze. Mm -hmm. You're going to read both issues in, like, 20 minutes. Oh, true, true. Because it it, it, it almost has no dialogue. Well, it has dialogue, of course. Yeah, it does, but it's most action than it is, you know, lots of read, 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 story, story, story. Now nah, it's fine. So if you want something mindless and something fun to go to, to go, to, go f with this arc. True, I, I totally agree. And it's one of those stories where you can just pick up and read. I mean, you don't need to have an established story to enjoy. Like, you can just pick it, pick it up and read it. If somebody has it on the coffee table, yeah, go ahead. And yet the funny thing is that when you contrast it with the two-part that comes afterwards, which we'll uh... get to in, in due course, that was also meant to be, I think, kind of mindless fun, but there were far more logistical questions that... Yeah, it made it less fun for me. Mm, true, true. I I do I do have a bone to pick with the with the next two parter. Oh yeah. And, but it might not be for the reasons that you expect. It actually is for for something. I might tell you after the show, so oh, people right. don't don't know what I'm talking about. When we will not get spoiled when we reach the next uh, the next review. All right, all right. So we will we will tackle that in due course. In yes. So uh. <laughs> But in in like final conclusions, I already said what I uh, what I thought of it. What about you, Silver? What do you think of it? Oh, fun overall. It's it's lighthearted. It's a pirate adventure. Uh, it features the most lecherous starfish I've seen in comic <laughs> books so far. What really? What page? Yeah. Uh, let's see. While well, I'm reading off the paper, uh, the heart, the trade paperback. It's the scene where Fluttershy gets hit with the wave, and Captain uh, Hoofbeard makes his first appearance. Oh, really? If you look. 
It's the panel where, oh, where okay. Fluttershy is saying, goodness day, where did that come? Oh. And if you look at her plot, <laughs> yes, there's a starfish there, and he's just <laughs> smiling so happily. Oh, my. As he's found a very warm, sunny spot, apparently. Oh, my God, it does. <laughs> Uh, okay. There are there are so many wrong ways I've taken this comic. It's rather unique for me, but I'm enjoying it. <laughs> so, like I say, I have. Whenever you try to introduce romance, it's a it's a hard sell, and especially with a character who hasn't doesn't have a lot of backstory to him on his own. But it's fun. It's it's lighthearted, and at the end, it's I'm glad to include Hoofbeard in the league of guys who aren't jerks or idiots. It's a very small club. Oh yeah, yeah. Which is such a small. It's such a small league when you think about Mm -hmm. it. Even most of the pirate ponies are not that jerky. They're just doing their job. Again, I I have to wonder if Equestria really breeds that sort of uh, social struggle that you need piracy. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Probably. (laughs) Who knows? Well, you don't know. Like if recession managed to hit the UK, I'm pretty sure it can also hit Equestria. (laughs) There you go. I'm telling you, get some griffins in. I'm sure you could have some parrot griffins letting themselves out. <laughs> oh, God, no. So, and as for me, I just love this arc. The art is awesome. The in-jokes are awesome, too. The pop culture reference are there. Like, Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, and also Nami are there. Like, this is just awesome. Like, hmm. Art style is also good too, and costume on the ponies, awesome, awesome, just awesome. Uh, other than me gushing over the ponies' clothes, James, have you stated all of yours? Yeah, I did state mine. I did say that it's a fun swashbuckling adventure, that if you don't want to think too much, if you don't want something high concept, well, go for this. If you want something high concept, go for the Chrysalis arc, go mm. for the Nightmare Rarity arc, or go for the uh, Big Macintosh looking for a box of nails yeah. arc. Because that is that is something that is less uh, uh, childish, not in the bad way, but in the you know it is something that only a niche part of the audience will uh, will go go with. Mm-hmm. True, 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 true. While this this uh, story actually might speak to a lot more people because it's more universal, you know, the whole pirates, uh, pirates, was <laughs> adventure just because. Yep, yep. So rating, gents. Well, I don't really do ratings, but I I say do read it. It's fun. Do read it. Yeah, I don't give. I don't like to give numeric scores because it just cheapens the entire thing. It's like just waiting for the person to hear. To, it's like you give your entire review. And then you are like, I'm going to sum up my feelings about something in a number. Like, ah, that's, that's completely, completely pointless. Go read the comic. Go check it out. You are not going to be disappointed because believe it or not, there is, there is something to like in, uh, for everyone in this comic. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I would say go read it too. It's just awesome. I, I can't say much because it's awesome. Just go, just go. That's all I can see. So, <laughs> I guess everyone loves it then, right? I guess that's Aye. the consensus. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. So, Aye. <laughs> so, James. Army so, James, what be the next review? Well, the next review is going to be Micro Series number 5. That is the Pinkie Pie Micro. And we are going to be reviewing it next week. But thanks to our time-traveling powers, we are going to be reviewing re- this one right after... The one that we just did. <laughs> I just broke the illusion. Uh, you always been broken the illusion. There's no surprise like to it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Destroy the fourth wall. It's ah oh, no fourth wall integrity to one percent. <laughs> but anywho, but anywho, uh, I guess we can end it here, right? And move on to the next one. Yeah, yeah. Let's end it here and let's move to the next one. So I have been James Cork. And I have been Derpy Sanzo. <laughs> and now you be Captain Silverbeard. Hi. <laughs> and we thank you guys for watching our, well, more like listening to our review of the Salty Sea Mare comic arc of the MLPFIM IDW comic series. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye, guys. Adios. Have a good one. <laughs> <laughs>